The worst part about the rat race is that every time you think you're gonna win, there's more rats or the tracks become even longer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ayan Ali Khalfan and I deny to be a rat. Do any of you guys like being rats, judges? Do you like being rats? Any audience? Do, does anyone like being a rat? Thank you. Now, my topic is spiritual discipline. What do I mean when I say the rat race? I, I mean the fast-paced world. But the first question that comes to mind, what is this fast-paced world? This often means having to get things done quickly and effectively increases pressure. This means that I have to take quick decisions. I have to move faster in life. I have to do everything faster. And this is what I call the rat race. Every morning I wake up, I have to go for a nine to five job. I have to get it done. I have to work hard for my promotion with me and my fellow rats, my fellow peers who are also working for that promotion. Even this rat race, as bad, it, as, bad as it already is, there's even more challenges such as overload and stress. When I have thousands of rats with me running towards a certain promotion, all of us have stress. We are all trying to get that promotion. There's a lot of distractions. Maybe I'll see some cheese on the side. I want to work. I want to finish this task. But there's a pop-up ad. Oh, look at this new game. I personally, I get distracted. I go to play the game and I play so good. There's also uncertainty. I don't know what I'm working towards. I reach that promotion, there'll be another one. That's why I say the tracks keep on getting longer and longer every time. But as the beauty of our religion and the Almighty in all his perfection, he has prepared us for everything that comes our way. Even in the Quran, Allah says exactly, you, in, in Surah Anbiya, verse 37, humankind is made of haste, and I will soon show you my signs, so do not ask me to hasten them. Allah is literally telling us that there is a rat race. You people will be running. You will be in a haste. But Allah does not just give us a problem without a solution. He even gives us the solution. And what is the solution to this rat race? It's spiritual discipline. Working to align ourselves to the righteous path of God. And how can I do that? If I don't have spiritual discipline, I will just be running. I'll be greedy. I'll want the power. But the one thing that keeps me online to the righteous path is my discipline. And not just any discipline, my spiritual discipline. There's two aspects to life. There's our physical self and there's our metaphysical self. Now, we all know our physical selves, right? But what is this metaphysical self? For example, Farhan. Is Farhan just a body? It's not. There is a metaphysical aspect to him. We just know the body, but we do not know the soul. And most of us, many people in this world, the reason we call ourselves is rats is because we lose. We, lo we don't think about the soul. I'm a rat. I, this is my body, and I'm running towards perfection for my body. But we do not think about the greater good. But Islam tells us that the body is simply a, the body is simply a tool to achieve greatness for the soul. And how do we use this tool to achieve greatness for the soul? This is simple stuff. Science is now finding out. Wake up in the morning and do gratitude. 1,400 years ago, we have been told, do tasbih, alhamdulillah. That means gratitude. Subhanallah, you are great. Again, gratitude. They are now tell Science is now saying, do yoga, prostrate. 1,400 years ago, Islam told us, pray namaz. Not once, but thrice. They tell us, think of your day before sleeping. Islam told that to us 1,400 years ago. Prophet told his Sahabas, they think of your day, ponder, and then sleep. And this we can see in even this, after Fajr, nap, bathrooms, routine, exercises, a healthy breakfast. We have all been told, eat breakfast like a king. Haven't we been told by our holy prophet? We have. With all this, how can we stay on the right path with all our discipline? We have the spiritual discipline. But what we have to realize is what, what the world is making us human doing. But we have to be human beings. Islam has made us to be human beings and not human doings. The world wants us to race towards a point. Islam wants us to realize and learn. From my personal story, 
how I realized I'm out of the rat race. I was always scared of exams and I had a lot of pressure. But then I read, I read somewhere that do gratitude, you'll do even better. So I was like, what gratitude can I do? And I learned, I listened to a lecture and they told me tasbih. I started doing tasbih and tasbih and tasbih. I did, I did like a thousand tasbihs before my exam. I did the exam and alhamdulillah I passed. And that's when I realized religion is not, uh, your beliefs, sermons, and doctrines do not make your religion. It's your realization of God. It's your beliefs in God when you realize who's the greater power and who's power in your metaphysical self. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very nice point, Sayan. So, do you feel that there is a shortcut, like if you have exams or if you want to get to the promotion, maybe we don't need to really work that hard and challenge ourselves, but if we are just spiritually disciplined, will it achieve the purpose, you think? So, again, <coughs> when our prophets gave us hadith, there's also a hadith that says, when you prepare for something, do two things. So I'll give it in the worldly terms. Let's say exams. When you prepare for exams, do two things. One is actually prepare for the exams and remember your God. If one person, whenever I was small, my mom always used to tell me this story. And as all typical Shia stories, there was Ali and Fatima. So Fatima always used to only pray, never study for the exam. And Ali always used to study and never pray. And guess what was happening? According to my mom, I hope that's true. Both of them are always failing. Now, then, the first two names, Ali and Fatim, are taken. Who's the third most typical name? Muhammad. Muhammad comes up, Muhammad prays, Muhammad studies, he does everything. And guess who passes the exam from Ali, Fatim, and Muhammad? It was Muhammad. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Ayan. So, Ayan, uh, one aspect, just looking at the way the question was phrased, that I feel you didn't talk enough about, and I would like to give you that opportunity through this question, is there was this element of unity, you know, in communities, etc. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, in line with your presentation, spiritual discipline and how it helps bring this unity between individuals and communities? Okay. So, your question was how spiritual discipline helps the community come together. So based on top of my mind, the first things I can think of is Juma prayers, Eid prayers. Everyone can be praying in their own homes, but when they come for Eid prayer in the morning, everyone is talking, everyone is enjoying. The community feels as if one. I, 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 mean, I don't like talking to uncles usually, but when I go for Eid prayers, mashallah, they all like, I feel, wow, mashallah, this is, I'm really loving my community now. And that's how the community realizes that we're all one family at the end of the day. Thank you so much.